The two snow leopards dart through the snow, weaving between rocks and leaping over small mounds. Their movements are fluid and agile, a testament to their mastery of this harsh mountain environment. The two snow leopards continue their playful antics, leaping and chasing each other through the snow. Their bond is evident in every movement, a testament to the strong sibling relationship. At an altitude of over 4,000 meters, Chichem Bridge is one of the highest suspension bridges in the world, linking the villages of Chichem and Kibber. Huh? Yeah. How is it feeling, sir? It's feeling cold, it's feeling awesome. <laughs> it's feeling to be amazing. on top of the highest bridge on the planet. The Shin siblings took us back to our childhood. It reminded us of our own innocence when we were young. Our local guides informed us of movement of red foxes nearby. While the snow leopards will forever be etched in our hearts, it was time to change gears. We were back cliffhanging in paradise once more for another endemic species here. With its sleek body and bushy tail, the red fox moves with grace and agility across the rocky terrain of Spiti Valley. The red fox faces numerous threats in Spiti Valley, including habitat loss, poaching, and conflicts with humans and livestock. Unlike the snow leopards that keep a huge distance, the red fox was close in the same cliff we were at. We don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us. Mm -hmm. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. Mm -hmm. Over the This phenomenon we observed with the snow leopards as well. They all seem to eat snow probably to quench their thirst. It settled on for a nap. But was awake soon and left quietly as it came leaving us behind.
Ibex are wild goats that are found in mountainous regions. They are known for their impressive horns and their ability to navigate steep and rocky terrain. They are the prey base for the snow leopards. Female ibex are smaller in size and their horns are smaller. Blue sheep are also a species of wild goat found here and they are usually found in elevations of 18,000 feet. These are also the prey base for the snow leopards. Next day after lunch we got news of two snow leopards in a place called Langza, 46 kilometers to base camp. Immediately we rushed as the drive would take 1.5 hours one way. We reached on location. The walk was quite a distance to reach here which was perhaps the most dangerous of locations so far. Some of my colleagues had taken a balcony view nearby. Our cameras were ready to rock and roll. There was a female adult snow leopard sleeping down below. We knew this will require amazing amount of patience. The snow leopard will probably be sleeping for the rest of the day and our feet is going to get a frostbite standing for long hours in the snow.
Quite evident now that the male was being persistent to mate, but the female was dodging him for some reason and was looking up straight where we were. I don't think we were visible to them, maybe it was a smell, as we could not see them clearly with naked eye. Snow leopards are solitary animals and their mating behavior reflects this. When it's time for mating, a female snow leopard will leave scent markings in her territory to attract males. Male snow leopards may travel great distances to find a mate, guided by the scent marks left by the receptive females. Once a male locates a female, they may engage in a courtship ritual that involves sniffing, vocalizations and physical interactions. Mating usually occurs during the winter months, typically between January and mid-March when females are in estrus. Snow leopards mate multiple times during this time to increase the chance of successful fertilization. After mating, the male usually leaves and the female is left alone to gestate and raise the cubs. The gestation period of snow leopards is approximately 90 to 100 days. The mating behavior of snow leopards is often elusive and difficult to observe due to their remote mountainous habitat and solitary nature. As a result, much of what is known about their mating behavior comes from observations made in captivity and occasional sightings in the wild. Be here at my shoulder Be here in my side Be here when the cold night falls And in the morning light Be here in the autumn When all the colors call Be the burning memory Of all the summers gone Be here every morning Be the calm I feel Be the beauty I behold All the days I'm here Be here to remind me Of all the goodness I have known Be the heart that holds on tight Don't let me let it go And 
I hope you never doubted That I am here to stay To give you all my love for all my days Be here by the fire be here in my arms Even when the embers die We'll keep shining on Be here at my shoulder Be here at my side Be here when the cold night falls And in the morning light Be here when We the came cold close to witnessing a rare falls. mating scene of two snow leopards It was getting late and we had drifted quite far from our base camp So we decided to leave here Despite Sherry carrying my camera and tripod, this walk was burning my lungs. It was not easy and this charade had to continue for two more days here in Kibber. This was the most difficult trek I had ever undertaken in my four years of wildlife trips. The walk is difficult when you climb up and I think few more years of discipline and workouts should get us to navigate this terrain easily. There was news that there will be the biggest snowstorms in the entire Himalayan belt in the next three days. But as with all weather reports, we didn't take it seriously and perhaps that worked in our favor. Next day, we woke up to snowfall as expected. Doubt was high in our hearts if we should continue staying in Kibber or just leave. It definitely didn't look good outside. If the snowfall continued like this, it would be catastrophic and we would be stranded here for days until the damages were fixed. <laughs> Next day we went to the Keys Monastery and made a wish that we wanted to see 10 more snow leopards. 10 snow leopards more to go. <laughs> Just one more day. Animals have a sixth sense and the way this red fox was curled up it somehow knew the weather was going to become worse. After seeing this, we decided to get out of Kibber. <laughs> There's a camera. <laughs> what are you guys Hello. doing? <laughs> we 
we were lucky enough to see four snow leopards the red foxes and other wildlife here and i think we had been blessed i was told that my last name daishin actually meant a snow leopard photo photo lijo photo 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 lijo photo 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 lijo photo at the end of the trip we realized that life in the snow and that too at 14000 feet is not easy It is perhaps the most difficult terrain we had ever been to. Did you see the meeting of the leopards? <laughs> How no, was the meeting? No, unfortunately I couldn't. Why? The supposed meeting, I couldn't see it. Why? I don't know, maybe my camera, camera has some camera. Uh, camera has some issues. <laughs> <laughs> We all were in a cheerful mood and we thought we could go back easily from this place. Little did we know what was in store for us once we managed to escape Kipper and descend up to Kaza. This ride was risky and the snowfall can create landslides letting big rocks roll down the cliff. The descent to Kaza was around 1 hour but we were slowed down dramatically. Upon arriving in Kaza we were pinned in this place for 4 days as the route to Tabo and beyond we were told were not motorable at all. I fell sick for the next 2 days here. and each day i used to look out the window expecting the snow to settle down from my room but no respite finally we got clearance from the local authorities to proceed with our journey the border roads had worked hard last few days and cleared the roads up to a place called po For four days, there was no electricity and network in this place. It was completely cut off from the rest of the world. Smile, to karo. Bye bye. 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 A convoy of vehicles were asked to keep together and help each other and descend quietly. Things became dangerous and rugged in the dark. There were huge rocks that were still blocking the roads that were pushed to the side by the BRO. I was praying that we will be able to clear safely down to Pu without any issues. The arrow was clearing the landslides ahead of us and we realized how lucky we were to have stayed in Kaza for the 4 days. We heard from other groups who left early that they were stranded in between landslides sleeping in their vehicles until the road was cleared. Mm-hmm. 
It looked like massive landslides and avalanches together had caused the destruction. We had passed through the dangerous section and were welcomed by a marriage celebration that was a symbolic view for us and reminded us how lucky we were to survive a dreadful night and with the help of BRO we were able to continue our descent seamlessly.